Good morning and welcome to Worship at the Cross. This is our special needs worship service here at Light of the Valley. Um, so we're glad that you can be here. Everything we're going to need for our worship is going to be projected right up here for you to follow along with. So let's, uh, let's begin our worship. The service begins uh, with the cross. We worship at the cross because on the cross, Jesus got rid of all the bad things we do. So now we need someone to come and light the candle. We light a candle to remind us that Jesus is always with us. And we ring a bell. Can I have a volunteer to ring the bell, please? We ring the bell. Remind us that it's time that we listen to God's word, sing to God, and pray to Him. Thank you. All right. So our memory treasury, uh, treasure for today, uh, the Bible passage we're going to focus on, is from Hebrews 4.15. Uh, Jesus has been tempted in every way, just like us, but He did not sin. So let's say that all together. Jesus has been tempted in every way, just like us, but he did not sin. Hebrews 4.15 Alright, so we're going to start by singing, Jesus Loves Me. God, He is the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we all respond, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, come and be with us today. Bless our worship, give us understanding as we listen to your word, give us joy as we sing to your glory, give us peace as we bring our prayers to you. We ask this in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. We confess our sins and receive forgiveness. Dear children of God, our God is holy. He does not sin. Our God is holy. He does not want us to sin. We are sinners. We do what God tells us not to do. We fail to do what God does tell us to do. Let us tell God what, that we have sinned with these words, God, I have sinned. And we all say, God, I have sinned. Let us tell God that we are sorry that we have sinned with these words, God, I am sorry. 
God, we all say, God, I am sorry. Jesus died on the cross instead of you. Jesus' death pays for your sins. You can be certain these words are true when you say, Jesus died for me. And we all say, Jesus died for me. Through faith in Jesus, God forgives all your sins. Let us tell the good news in this way. God forgives me. And we all say, God forgives me. We respond to God's forgiveness. So we all say, Thank you, God, for taking away my sins. As forgiven children of God, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Now we know that we have forgiveness for all our sins. Now we know that we are your people. Now we know that we will live with you in heaven someday. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Again, remember our memory treasure for today. Say it together. Jesus has been tempted in every way, just like us, but he did not sin. Hebrews 4, 15. We're going to sing, God loves me dearly. is. It's a big word. It means trying to get us to do something that we aren't supposed to do. Maybe mom or dad said, don't eat that cookie before dinner. And so you see that cookie and it looks so good. It looks so tasty. And you're thinking, oh, I really want to eat that. But, but mom or dad, they said no. That's a temptation. There's lots of things in life that can tempt us, that can make us want to do what we're not supposed to do. You know, maybe it is, you know, we think of that nice cookie or we think of some cake, something that it tastes yummy, but it's not always good for us. And we know we shouldn't always eat it. Maybe it's money, that we really just want more and more money. We're to do anything we want so that we can get more money to buy cool stuff, like maybe a car, really cool fast sports car, but... Maybe I can't afford that car. Maybe I shouldn't buy it, but I want to. Or maybe it's doing something that could hurt me. Something like, like smoking cigarettes. Like maybe this actually, it might be something that I enjoy or other people like to do, but maybe it's not good for me. But all these things are temptations. And it's kind of like, maybe you've seen it, maybe in cartoons or something like that. You've got a devil on one side and an angel on another. And they're kind of whispering things in your ears, telling you what you should do or what you shouldn't do. And you're kind of always at war. You're always battling which one to wins out. Which one am I going to listen to? Am I going to listen to what's good? Or am I going to listen to what's bad? We have lots of things that tempt us. But do you know that Jesus was tempted? Yeah, the devil came to Jesus... And he tempted him. He tried him to get Jesus to do things that were wrong. There were three of them that are mentioned in the Bible. Three specific things that the devil tempted Jesus with. The first one was, after Jesus had gone a long time, 40 days, without eating, he was really hungry, and the devil said to him, Hey, why don't you just turn these bread, these stones, into bread? And you could just, you know, do that, and you could not be hungry anymore. That kind of sounds good, but not when the devil's telling you to do that. And so Jesus said, but man does not live on bread alone. I'm not going to listen to you, devil. I'm not going to do what I'm not supposed to do. Well, the devil took him up to the highest part of their temple, of their place of worship, 
And the devil said, you know, God promised that if you throw yourself down, that he'll send his angels and they'll pick you up. You won't even strike your foot against a stone. You'll be completely safe if you throw yourself off the building. If you guys went to the roof of your house and you jumped out, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to You're gonna get hurt. You're going to fall. And so Jesus said, but God says, do not put your Lord to the test. So no, I'm not going to do something where I know I'm going to get hurt, but I know God is also protecting me. So he said, no, devil, I'm not going to listen to you. And then the devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. Kind of hard to figure that all out, to see all that in a picture, but he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, all these can be yours if you just bow down and worship me. I worship the devil? Well, that's not a good idea. That's not what God wants us to do. So Jesus said, no, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And so Jesus was tempted every way just like us. We did not sin. That's our memory treasure for today. Jesus has been tempted in every way just like us, but he did not sin. Now I know you all get tempted. You have that little voice that tries to tell you to do things that you know you shouldn't do. Sometimes we do it, don't we? We do the things we know we're not supposed to do, and then it's pointed out to us, and we're told that was bad, and that was wrong what you did. And you know what? It makes us feel pretty awful. We wish that thing could have gone away, that it never had happened, but it's still there. We need someone to come in and fix our problems, fix us from the times that we do the things we're not supposed to do when we fall into temptation. We need a Savior, someone to save us from the bad things we do. Well, just like you heard in that story, Jesus was tempted in every way that we are, yet he did not sin. We have the perfect Savior. That's what it means. He lived his life being tempted by the devil, the devil trying to get him to do things that he shouldn't do. But Jesus never obeyed the devil. He always obeyed God, always did what was right. That's our memory treasure again. Let's say that one all together. Jesus, Jesus has, has been, been tempted in every way, just like us, but he did not sin. Hebrews 4.15 And because he was perfect, then... He went to the cross. And there he died. He shed his blood to take away all the sins we have committed. You can think of every time you've fallen for a temptation that he nailed it to the cross. That's your sin up there. That's the things you've done wrong. The temptations you've fallen into. And Jesus said, it's paid in full. There's nothing more owed because I am perfect and I'm, so your, I'm your perfect Savior. He's the Savior we need. That's what we get to celebrate as we're getting closer to Easter. We're going to celebrate Good Friday of Jesus sacrificing his perfect life for us. Because when he does that, he puts all that perfection on us. Like all our sins are gone away. It's like we've never done anything wrong ever. And so we know God loves us. He loves us. He adopts us into his family. We know he'll always love us because we have that perfect Savior. So again, that's our memory treasure. Let's say it all together. Jesus, Jesus has been, been tempted, tempted in every way, way just like us, but he did not sin. Hebrews 4.15 All right, we respond to God's word. This is called the Apostles' Creed. It's a statement of what we believe. Let us respond to God's word by telling everyone what we believe about God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We tell everyone that we believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, with these words, I believe in God the Father. And so we all say, I believe in God the Father. And we sing, Father, I adore you. We believe in God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We tell everyone we believe this with these words, I believe in Jesus Christ. And so we all say, I believe in Jesus Christ. And sing the next verse. Jesus, I adore you. the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We tell everyone we believe this with these words, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And so we all say, I, I believe, believe in, in the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And we sing. Spirit, I adore you. So we gather our gifts to God. So we want to give something back to God of what we have. This is where we do that. We say thank Him not just with our life, but also with our offerings. All right. And then, do we have any prayer requests today? Just for Tammy to get back in school. All right, for Tammy yeah, yeah. to get back in school. Yeah, that'd be very good. I'm going to pray that the rain lets up for a little bit this afternoon. All right, so there we go. Let's, let's, uh, let's take that to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you have been watching over all of us during this time of a pandemic. And you've kept many of us healthy for many long, and yet some people have gotten sick. For those who are sick, we ask that you would heal them. For those who have been exposed to the virus, we ask that you would keep them safe as well. As Timmy is uh, waiting out his isolation, we give you thanks that he is still healthy, that he hasn't gotten sick. And we pray that uh, soon he can be retested and show that his test is negative and that he can come back to school. Also, Lord, if it is your will, we appreciate the rain so much. We need it. Our ground needs it. Our crops need it. We need it for life. But also, Lord, we were hoping to, to walk around our neighborhood this afternoon and invite people to come and hear your word. So if it is your will, let the rain uh, go away for a little bit this afternoon so that we can go and deliver those invitations and more people can come to know you as their perfect Savior. We place all these requests before you, knowing you will hear and answer us in the way that is best. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, and we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile on you and show you his love. The Lord lead you to live in his peace as his forgiven child. And we all say, Amen. We get to go home tonight remembering our memory treasure. Let's say it all together. Jesus has been tempted in every way, just like us, but he did not sin. Hebrews 4, 15. All right, and so our service now is coming to a close. When we extinguish the candle, we have our volunteer to come up and do that.
and we ring our bell to close our service. Can we have a volunteer to do that? So we're going to end with the song, This Little Gospel, Light of Mine. A little bit of a jazzy tune, jazzy get-up that we found. Uh, so join me as we sing our last song. Church in Layton. Hope you can join us next time. God bless.